Hello, hello, and morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. We're back today, as I'm as I'm sure some of you have seen in my stories, for our next episode of our Show Up, Speak Up series. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been interviewing various different experts from different areas of, you know, the mental health and wellness field, um, trying to get a good mix to, you know, to suit all different needs and problems. So today we're actually going to be talking about something a little bit different, which I'm really excited about. And I think with mental health, you know, there is a lot of focus on the individual and the people that are going through it, obviously, because, you know, that's the main focus. However, people with mental health um, problems, this can have a big impact on those around them. And, you know, the family members, friends, loved ones, kids, you know, all of those people who are supporting them through their journey, it can actually have a big, big effect on those people involved in that process. Because, you know, it's not just the individual, this we're talking about in most mental health cases, it's a family unit. Or, you know, you've got to have a support system around you, which can obviously have negative effects on people trying to help. It's really difficult. So, well, who I've got on today is a lovely woman called Sabi. So, Sabi is main mission. She's on a bit of a personal mission to provide support for the supporters. Like I said, we're talking about the people dealing with someone with a mental health problem. And Sabi actually spent three years in a relationship with someone with anxiety and depression so she knows first hand how difficult this battle can be living with someone with a mental health problem and how it can affect a person's well-being so what she found is that there's a real lack of conversation a lack of support and a lack of resources for those people so what she's done is she started to take it upon herself to start creating that support and those resources and her new project is called The Mental Health Adjacent, which will completely focus on experiences of those supporters and provide different tools and support that so they can best look after themselves. So I'm really excited to talk more to Sabi about her experiences and what she's got coming up. So I'll just invite her on, so bear with me. Bear with. If I can find her. Always fun. So I'll just ask her to join. Um, If anyone's got any questions that they'd like to ask or anything at all, please drop me a message or write it in the chats and we'll try and find find where she is aha there she is so now we'll try again always fun these instagram lives (laughs) hello just turn up my volume so I can hear you. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I didn't know whether we were going to get you for a moment then. <laughs> it's taking its time. I'm, try- I'm trying this for the first time, actually. I've never done one of these, and I'm trying it on my iPad. So, Yeah, well, we got you, so it's all good. Things are working. But thank you so much for spe- like spending your time and you know, we're all busy still at the moment. So I really appreciate you coming and talking to us because I think this is something that is really, really needed, you know, providing support for people, you know, supporting loved ones with a mental health condition. And, you know, it's something that isn't talked about as much, obviously. So I'm really excited to kind of have you on and ask you a few questions about your own personal experience and, you know, those things that you've got coming up. So... Could you just start, you know, and tell us a little bit more about yourself and a bit of your story, you know, share as much as you as you feel you need to just to kind of set the scene and share with everyone how, you know, 
your story, basically, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me and giving me this platform to talk about it. Uh, it really is very important and sadly not something that gets talked about enough. Mm. So um, a little bit about me. I'm Savvy. I'm from Uruguay. And um, my story kind of started three years ago. Um, I started dating this guy and a little bit into our relationship, um, I discovered that he was struggling with anxiety and depression. It was nothing, not something we ever really talked about very openly in the relationship, but it was something that evidently impacted the relationship. At first, it was sort of just he was taking meds at the time, and that was kind of like all I knew about it. But then as we got further into our relationship, um, the the first big thing that happened was that he had a panic attack or an anxiety attack. I'm not sure which one it is, but I was right there with him. And that was a very scary situation for me because I had never experienced that myself, nor had I seen anybody else experience it. So it really threw me off because I had absolutely no idea what to do. I didn't know how, how I could help him. Um, and it was, it was very scary for me as well as a person because when you have no experience with that sort of thing, it's very easy to start blaming yourself. So I was like, I was panicking. So I was like, what did I say? What did I do? How did I make this happen? And um, that became a very prevalent thing in our relationship. So after a while, um, the first, I would say up to the year and a half mark or so our relationship became very centered in him and making sure he was okay and making sure I wasn't triggering him making sure I was supporting him and that led to me letting go of myself like I I didn't make space in the in the relationship for myself so I didn't allow myself to ever feel upset or have any sort of negative emotions because I felt like if I wasn't doing that well I would trigger him and I didn't mm -hmm. want to trigger him it all became very centered on making sure he was okay and I wasn't creating any space for me to not be okay. Which, you know, I'm also a person. <laughs> I'm, I can't be okay all the time. So it was um, a very exhausting mm -hmm. experience to try and be okay all the time for someone else. And so after kind of, I got to a really low point where I was really not feeling well myself. I was starting to experience um, a lot of irritability, a lot of exhaustion. It was very hard for me to feel sympathetic towards him because I just didn't have room for it. And it got to a breaking point where, where I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Like, this is not healthy for me. And so I started talking to him about it and it wasn't easy. <laughs> he did mm. get triggered a lot. We experienced but like anxiety attacks on his part there was a lot of crying there was a lot of all sorts of stuff and it wasn't easy conversations but they were definitely necessary and the more we talked about it the more we started to kind of like create space for both of us in the relationship and things got a little bit easier but through that uh, that entire experience I realized that there really wasn't enough information out there about what it's like to support someone else that's struggling with their mental health and how important it really is to remember to take care of yourself because you're also a person and you also need to be taking care of your own mental well-being because we all have a mental health to look after mm. and that's kind of what led me to everything I'm, I'm doing today yeah it's so important and like you said you're you're in this place and you love the person and you just want them to get better so it kind of can feel like you're walking on eggshells can't it what do I say? Do, am I saying the right thing? Am I saying the wrong thing? You know, what do I need to do? And for you, was how did, when you said that you kind of lost yourself, how did that happen over time? Was it a gradual thing? How did you feel that yourself was changing throughout that process? Or was there anything that you noticed kind of along the way that was like letting you know that actually, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not actually okay in, in all of this and something's changing within me. Was there stuff that let you know that happened? Yeah, it was a very gradual process. Um, it started by me kind of like invalidating everything that I was feeling that wasn't positive. Mm -hmm. So if I would get like 
bothered by something i would be like okay but that is not that big of a deal or well that is your problem or like stuff like that and i wasn't allowing myself any space to not be okay and i wasn't addressing anything that was hurting me or bothering me um because i just didn't want to trigger my partner so i was kind of like swallowing it all of it up and that led me to me being very irritable i was like <laughs> my temper got way shorter than before and because i wasn't addressing anything that was bothering me there was a lot more that started bothering me but i still didn't want to address it so i kept like bottling it all down and at the what was probably like the breaking point for me was that at some point i went on google and i <laughs> asked like i researched if depression was contagious because i was just feeling like very very exhausted and mm. I, i started going to that very dim place where i was just feeling bad all the time and it was and so um i know it, it looking back it looks like really a very trivial question but at that point like i was just in that moment like i it was not a very rational moment so that was that was when i realized like okay i can't keep going on like this because if i do i am going to end up sacrificing my own mental well-being to support my my partner and it's actually it doesn't help either one of us. Mm. So that's when I decided really to needed to shift things around. Yeah, and how did you actually do that? You know like it's it's a really it can be a really scary thing for anyone to actually, you know, reach out whether that's the individual or the loved one and say like, look, I'm not doing so well. Um how did you actually have that conversation or you know bring up that conversation with him because i'm sure that must have been a really kind of nerve-wracking thing to do it was it was a very scary thing uh but i kind of just like tried to go it at it as slowly as i could and i was like look i know you're going through all of this but i'm also like i'm this is how i'm feeling and this is what's happening to me and i need for to have space for myself as well in this relationship because otherwise like I can't keep being in a relationship that I have no space in mm. because it's it's only about you and that is not okay. And so there was a lot of conversations. Sometimes we had to talk the same thing like over yeah. a few times. involved. Oh. And um And you know, sometimes like it, I would start talking about it and then I would dismiss myself because he got triggered and I was like, okay, let's not talk about mm-hmm. this anymore. And so it was it was definitely a learning process and it took a lot of time and a lot of patience on on both sides. Um but it's it's something that's necessary and well, I also went on <laughs> on the internet and I started researching a lot of things so that kind of helped me in my journey. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing that you just said, you know, it is a process and it can take time and it may not just be one conversation and then you know everything can start changing. It that in itself maybe it's a little mini journey in the bigger picture. So I think that's really you know really valuable thing that you just said to give people some reassurance that you know when I reach out it, I don't have to get everything across in one go. It can take some time and let things settle. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Like it's not it's not going to change overnight. And it's not like we started talking about it and suddenly things were perfect. Like there were things that were still happening uh, a year down the line from when we first talked about it because he was also going like he's so doing his own process of healing and and getting therapy and everything. And there were things that he couldn't address right away. But just me being able to put it out there uh was something that helped me. And there was also a lot I had to changed with myself and with my mindset mm-hmm. um, i had to start on that uh it wasn't like not to take things personally when he got triggered it wasn't actually about me yeah. and it wasn't me that was so i had to start understanding that and start um working on myself as well and you know revalidating myself uh, reminding myself that i i get to have feelings as well because i'm also human and i also get to not be okay all the time and so there was a, there was a lot of inner work i had to do with myself um to sort of get better yeah. and that and as i on myself that allowed me also to bring um the conversations to the table that i needed to yeah and what are some of the what are some of like the main challenges that you personally experienced in actually getting help for yourself 
Well, I think one big thing was this, like, we still have a very big stigma around mental mm. health, right? Yeah. And so even though I've done, I've done therapy all my life, and that's something I feel comfortable talking about, but I also don't have a mental illness diagnosis. So I feel like there is a big stigma when it comes to um, diagnosis, and especially when it comes to men. Because, you know, there's this society um, idea that men have to be the strong ones mm -hmm. and they don't have to, like, talk about it and stuff. And so that really led to me feeling like I had no right to talk about what I was going through because I wasn't the one that was actually, yeah. that actually had the diagnosis. It wasn't my story to tell. And I didn't want to expose my partner so I couldn't be talking about this. And so um, it was really tough for me to kind of, like, own up to the part of the story that belonged to me and the part of the experience that belonged to me to be able to address it and talk about it. And I actually, when I decided to start with this whole journey of talking about this in a more public way, I actually asked my, well, we're not longer together, but I asked my partner at the time if he was okay with me uh, talking about this and working, like embarking on this project and, you know, putting all of this out there. Because even though I never like mentioned his name, if someone that knows me, like, comes upon it they're not they're gonna know it's him so i i definitely asked his permission to do this and um i mean he was okay with it he said that it, i have a right to talk about mm -hmm. it as well because you know it's what I experienced so um he was okay with it but it definitely took me a long time to kind of like feel like i had a right to do so yeah yeah and like another thing that you said that really kind of stick out to me just then is this whole if i don't have a diagnosis then I can't get help, you know, and, you know, especially with mental health, a lot of the, the treatment approaches out there look to try and diagnose people. But if, like in your case, you know, you said I've been in therapy all my life, but I don't technically have a label or a diagnosis, that can itself make you feel that maybe, you know, my feelings aren't valid or I can't speak out about this. I think that's a really big thing for a lot of people is this, is this kind of need for a diagnosis. But sometimes that's just not the case, right? Yeah, absolutely. I know for me, like, even when I was feeling like my feelings weren't as valid, or they weren't as important, it was definitely because of the diagnosis. Mm. It was like, well, he has a diagnosis, so his mental health is more important. And looking after his feelings is more important, because he's the one that's struggling. Mm. But we all like we all have mental health, the way we have a, a physical health, we have a mental health, and it, we all have to look after it. And I, I mean, I'm a big advocate of therapy. I'm not in it right now, but I've done it like yeah. intermittently throughout my life. And it's, it's, it's so helpful. Like we, we there's so much for that we have in our minds that get programmed throughout our lives, so much negative things. Yeah. And so it's really important to someone help you kind of like thread through it and untangle everything that can be going on in there, whether you have a diagnosis or not. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And a lot of people, again, think that they can't go to therapy because it means they're broken or something's wrong with them. And actually, that's not the case. Like therapy can be thought of as just support for life, you know, <laughs> with all the stuff that we've got going on. <laughs> Absolutely. I know for me, the last time I went back to therapy was because my grandma passed. Mm. Like, And I had already ended my career with my psychologist. And that happened. I was like, I called her up and I was like, look, this happened, I'm needing support right now, I need a sounding board. And so I went back for a few sessions to help me like yeah. sort through my grief and everything that was coming up regarding that. Yeah, yeah, it's a completely different way of looking at it. Yeah, a sounding board, not that I'm weak, not that I'm broken or ill, it's just, just some support. And is, is talking about it now kind of helping you like continue that progress continue growing as a person and when was the actual time that you thought actually I need to do something about this I need to you know start a project or start speaking about this and actually do something about it was there a particular moment or time where you felt that that was necessary yeah it was actually like right after I got through my darkest period like right after I came to a point that I was like okay I went through all of this but I got over it yeah. and I feel like I'm I'm good now our relationship is not perfect, but it's steadier and there's space for both of us and there's communication. And so I was like, okay, I went through all of this and, and there was like, I had no support. There were very little resources out there. There was, you know, not enough people are talking about what it's like to be in the supporter role for yeah. someone and how important it is to look after yourself. So 
So if nobody, like if there's not enough conversation about it, then I'm gonna go out there and create the conversation to create, to put out there the resources I wish I had found when I needed them. Okay. And so that was definitely um, like the biggest impulse for me to start doing this. And I think um, it, I am still like growing through all of this. Like I'm still, I think a big part of, of this journey has been also kind of like reclaiming my experience and reframing it and looking at it through different angles. And it's a healing process mm. for me as well, um, as with putting together a podcast and talking to all of these different people, I get new perspectives on the things I went through. And so it helps me heal and it, it helps me keep growing. So definitely. Yeah, for sure. And um, this mental health adjacent podcast, tell us more a bit about that and what you've got planned for it and when it goes live and all the details. Yes. Um, so it's going to be going live on June 5th that's the official awesome. date um and it's basically a place to create this support um for the supporters um and kind of just like to to start this conversation about what it's like to support someone that's struggling with their mental health so my idea for it is to have always different experts that come on and also people that are in the supporter role so some of them there will be you know um different professionals that can offer different tools mm -hmm. that you can put into practice to better help you in your supporting process. Um, it's very focused on self-care. So not what you can do the, for the other person, but rather what you can do for yourself when you're supporting someone else. And then it's also a place to create supporting community. So my idea is to have a lot of people that are in that supporter role to be able to come on and share their stories because sometimes you just need to be listened to yeah. and to be heard. And so it, my idea is to create that space for people to share their own experiences and what it has been like for them to be in the supporter role. Yeah, that's amazing. I absolutely love that. You've got a bit of, you know, the, the experts coming on to share the, the tools and then actually personal experiences because I think, that, yeah, like you said, the more people talk about this, the more people that may be given a bit of confidence and, you know, a bit of a boost that actually, yeah, maybe my feelings are valid and that can trigger a whole conversation in itself. So yeah, I'm so excited. And that's on the 5th of June, did you say? Starts. Yes. It's coming out every Friday, starting on the 5th of June. Um, I'm pre-recording episodes right now and they're really good. So I'm really excited to put them out there. Um, but I know definitely one really big thing is feeling like you're alone. It can be a very isolating experience. Yeah. So that's why having other people share their own experiences, it's going to help people listen and be like, okay, I'm not alone. There's yeah. other people going through this. And it can be really supporting. And where can way. they, where can they find the podcast? How do, how do we listen to it? So the podcast is going to be hosted on Anchor. So it's hopefully going to be distributed on all platforms. Uh, but um, all the news are going to be going on my Instagram page. So that is definitely the best way to keep updated about it. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited to be here. It's so excited when we've got something new coming out. And I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people, especially right now, given this crazy time <laughs> that we're all in. And just like how are you now after all of that because it seems like you've been through a hell of a lot in your journey like are you how are you doing right now oh did that freeze i was just asking how are you right now how are you doing after all of that uh, well I mean, me and my boyfriend broke up right at the beginning of quarantine. Um, it wasn't 100% related to his mental health, but it kind of was. Um, I mean, I was, I, boundaries are a very big thing uh, and something we all should have in place. Mm. And I had some boundaries regarding trust that were very important for me and were put there at the beginning of the relationship, but reinforced throughout. Um, I'm a big, big person in trust, especially in a relationship. If I can trust you, I can't be with you. And he crossed over that boundary. So at that point I was like, I can't, like, I love you and I care for you and I'm still going to be here to support you. And as a matter of fact, we 
still talk every day and we've seen each other and I'm still here to support him, but it just can't be in a relationship mm -hmm. with him. I lost the trust I had in him. So <laughs> that's kind of been part of my <laughs> quarantine journey. Yeah. Um, that breakup. But I mean, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm taking care of myself and I'm really proud of myself for being able to uphold that boundary because I know that's something that I wouldn't have been able to do a while back. So that is also part of my journey and my healing. Yeah. So, and is there is there anything that you'd want others to know if they're str some for someone struggling right this second? Is there anything that you would want them to know, or anything that you think they should know or need to know before we leave? Uh, definitely to get help. I know it's a very big thing uh, for the people that are struggling with their mental health that they don't reach out for help because they don't feel like they need it or they feel like weakness to ask for help, but it really doesn't. Like it, it takes so much strength to reach out for help. So if you need it, go get it. Uh, and for those that are supporting, I think it's really important to understand that you can't heal the other person. It's not your responsibility to make them better. They have to do it by themselves and they have to be willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's, they're not there no matter what you try or how much you try. So I think it's all like, it's all kind of like a personal journey. Yeah. Like you can be there to support another person and you can give them love and you can hold space for them. But at the end of the day, you kind of have to recognize that you're only responsible for your own well-being and that's the only thing that you can control. So you really have to look after yourself and reach out for whatever tools you need to be okay. And the better you are, the more you're going to inspire the other person to get better as well. So Yeah, that's that's so important. I think, yeah, this this feeling that we have to try and fix other people and you know be that be that role often it's you know it, it's not going to help us it's not going to help them and just lead to even more stress and you know pressure so I really really kind of thank you for saying that and I know for my journey like my parents they took on that role to be the fixer and it created tension it pushed us apart I you know I didn't want the help and it just created this whole this whole scenario from them feeling that they needed to fix me or was like you said if they'd given me the space to actually come to that on my own terms it would have been much more helpful so thank you thank you for sharing that yeah. um but yeah i'm really excited to listen to the podcast which obviously the 5th of june um and yeah i just want to say thank you for coming on and sharing your story and being so open and honest about it and I'm sure that's going to help and inspire a lot of people who may be in similar situations. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I mean, that is that is what it's about. It took me a while to get mm -hmm. here, but now I'm at a point that I want to help others. So I'm happy to share um, as much as I need to, to, to put that help out there for others. Yeah, awesome. Perfect. Well, I'll let you get on with your <laughs> evening and... Like I said to everyone, you know, if anyone's got any questions about this episode, please contact Fabi or myself and, you know, I'll, I'll share your contact details so we can look forward to the podcast when it comes out. But all right, I'll Absolutely. let you go. And yeah, thanks again for sparing your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Awesome. We'll keep in contact. See you guys. Bye.